What's up guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to recreate this render in Blender. As you can see, it's a really stylish, sort of abstract, rooty animation. Uh, it looks really cool and it, I think you're going to learn quite a bit from this. Uh, we're going to be using one of the add-ons called the uh, Tree Sapling Generator or something. Um, but yeah, uh, end result's going to be this and hopefully you'll be able to make something interesting out of it. On a side note, if you do make this render or a variation of it, just tag me on Instagram because I'd love to see what you guys are doing with the tutorials I'm putting out. That's at Nebmotion, but I'll put a little thing down there. All right, on with the tutorial. Right, so once you've got Blender open, just hit A and then hit X on the keyboard and just delete everything. We're going to start with a fresh scene. So, and then once you've done that, you want to come to Edit, come to Preferences, and we're going to be using this uh, add on called Sapling Tree Gen. So just come to the add on section here in the search bar, search Sap and this should come up. Just make sure that's ticked because we're going to be using this. Okay, once that's done, hit Shift A, come to Curve, add a sapling tree gen. Just come to this menu here, just make sure you don't click out of anything because uh, once you click out of it, you won't be able to get to this menu again. But if you do click out of it, just delete the tree and just create a new one. Once you've got this menu open, we're going to come to Load Preset just down in the bottom and change that to Japanese Maple. You get this really cool sort of rooty look. Um, but if you want it to look a bit different to mine, just play with a random seed generator until you find a shape that you like. So once that's done, just click out of it. We are going to just right click it and just click convert to mesh. And if you're using a laptop, you can go to object and you can go convert to and do mesh from curve. And that will enable you to edit it and do some more interesting things. Now we're going to make sort of a symmetrical, so click on your tree, hit M on your keyboard, add a new collection, and we'll call it trees. Now hit Shift A, add a collection instance, and select the one that you just created. This is gonna create an instance of the object. Uh, the reason we do this is it's a lot easier on our computer. Um, it, sort of, it sort of makes copy of it without mesh data. So we're gonna add an instance. So hit Shift A, collection instance, and just select the one that you just created. Now hit R, X90, Shift D, RX90, Shift D, RX90. Now click on your bottom one, Shift D, R, Y90, Shift D, R, Y180. And now we have this sort of root ball. Just remember this, this one here is your master tree. So anything you do to this tree is now going to affect all the others. So we are going to add a modifier. And we're going to add a displace modifier. So click add modifier, add a displace, and it's going to look really weird. Add a new texture, and then come to your texture settings, and we're going to choose clouds in the type, and it still looks weird. So we're going to pump up the size, and we're going to drop the depth down. Now we're going to use an empty to modulate the uh, displacement. So if you hit Shift A, add an empty and we'll add a cube. So as I said, we're going to use a cube to um, essentially modulate the displacement. So if you come down to your main tree, the actual object, not the instance, come back to your modifier and on texture coordinate of this displacement modifier, we're going to link it to the, um, to the empty that we just created. So texture coordinate object, object and select empty. Now, any movement you make on that cube, it's going to move the displacement and you can create some cool abstract animations with this. So first of all, we're just going to scale it up a bit. So hit S on your empty and just bring it up, say about here. And we're just going to do a simple animation. We're just going to rotate the cube, put the ends to 240 because we're going to make this a 10 second animation and select your empty. On your um, transform settings of your empty, we're gonna just animate the rotation on the y-axis. So add a keyframe on your first frame on the y-axis of the rotation. Come to frame 241, and we're gonna change that to 360. Now apply a keyframe there, and just hit A, T, and make sure you set to linear. And now hit play, and you see you get this cool, sort of weird abstract movement. Looks quite cool. It's a bit intense though, so I might drop the strength down a bit, or you can scale the empty up. 
to sort of tame it out a bit, but I still think the, um, the strength is a bit too strong. So go back to your tree, back to your modifier, drop the strength down to probably about, we'll say about 0.5. Great. Click on your main tree, just this one here. And we're going to add a wireframe modifier now. So add modifier, add a wireframe. And now you get this sort of cool look here. But we're going to make it look even cooler. And this is where your computer is going to really start to struggle because you're dealing with a lot of verts. I'm just going to save this quick and then we're going to jump into rendered mode. So hit file, save, and just save it somewhere you can find it. Now we're going to jump into rendered mode. So hit Z and then 8. And first thing I'm going to do is make the world black. So if you come here, so this, this is your world settings, drop the color down to black. And we're going to take off our overlays for now. And you're not going to be able to see anything. So click on your tree. And we're going to add some a material. So if you just add a material, it doesn't matter what this is. We're going to leave that as it is. Add another one. Add a new. And on material two, we're going to change that to an emission shader and just leave the settings as they are. It's just going to be really simple settings, but you can play around with this if you want. Um, but for now, we're going to leave it as that. And then come back to your modify section and on your wireframe, we're going to change the material here. We're going to assign it to material one. And there you go. You start to see your wireframes. Now, I'm going to drop the thickness down to about 0.0. 0 0.04, maybe a 0 0.003 actually, and untick replace original, and now you get this really cool sort of pattern, and it just looks, it just looks really good anywhere you sort of face the camera. But now we're gonna set up a camera. So just pop your camera somewhere that you like. Just find a good, good spot. Let's say here, I like that spot. So find a spot, shift A, and add a camera. Now hit Control alt 0 and that's going to set your camera to where you are in your view viewport. We're going to do a simple camera rotation around the center point. You need to create another empty. So if you hit Shift A, add an empty, and we'll name this one Cam Empty. So just so you know, zero toggles camera mode. Now to get the camera to rotate across the center point like that, we I'm going to use this empty um, and we're going to parent the camera to the empty. So click on your camera first, then click on your new camera empty and hit Control P, object but keep transform. Now just click on your empty and now when you rotate your empty, it will rotate the camera along it. So we're going to just do a simple. 360 degree animation on this now. Click on your empty. Choose any axis you want. I'm going to go the Y axis because I think that looks pretty cool. Add a keyframe on the first frame. Come to frame 241. I'm going to go negative 360 and I'm going to apply a keyframe. And if you want, you can also scale the empty up if you want it to zoom the camera out, or you can scale the camera empty in if you want to zoom the camera into the center point but I think I'm going to leave it as it is. And I'm just going to move the empty along the Z a bit, I think. And some other things you can do as well is just expand that. And if you want to play around with your camera settings, you can play around with the focal length. If you want a more wide angle, I'm going to put the focal length about there, 30, 30 millimeters looks good for me. And that's literally it. Now it's just time to pretty much render the animation. It's just a really simple stylized sort of animation. So if you just come over to here, this little thing here, we're going to, just find a place to render the animation to. Change your file format to FFmpeg video. Change your encoder to MP4, your container, sorry. Uh, video codec, levers H264. Change that to perceptually lossless. And just come up to render, hit render animation. Right, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Uh, just a quick one, but I think it looks really cool and it's good to play around with the add ons as well. There's a lot of hidden things in Blender that you might not even know exist. Uh, I really like this. This tree generator is quite fun. Uh, if you did like the video, please leave a like and subscribe.
And don't forget to tag me in your render, that's at Nevermotion. Uh, like I said, I'd like to see what you guys are doing with the stories I'm putting out, and I'll also share it on my page. And if you want to play around with the project file, because you can't be asked to follow the tutorial, um, there will be a link to that on my website, that's nevmotion.co.uk.